One thing that's curious about just intonation, and that hasn't been addressed yet in the spring tuning stuff we've looked at, is that intervals like major thirds, whole steps, and so on, in anything other than an equal temperament, there will actually be different varieties of those intervals. They'll, they are non-unique. There are different size whole steps, different size half steps, different size fifths and fourths and so on. Um, and spring tuning kind of without, um, with what we've seen so far, doesn't really address that. And so it's always uh, prioritizing certain types of, of the, certain flavors over others. And so what I'm going to show you now is, is some of the ways that that can be addressed. Let's look at this example here to start. This is just the CDE. And, um, and what you see over here, I've, I've set it in equal temperament. And so we see the, the two whole steps are 200 cents. And of course, the major third is 400 cents. If you set it to adjust tuning, um, then the... Um, uh, C to D is going to be a 9 over 8 here, and then the D to E is going to be 10 over 9, so 182 cents versus the 204 uh, of the C to D, 204, D to E, 182, and these ratios 9 over 8 times 10 over 9 multiply nicely to 5 over 4. So it's an uneven division of the major third. Um, in spring tune, as, as we've seen it so far, every time it sees a whole step, it just uses 9 over 8. Um, so how can we deal with that? And let's actually see what happens in bit clavier when we uh, play this very example. And I'm going to show you uh, uh, in this paper that I've referenced before, uh, before we take a look at it, um, by default, what we're going to get is um, the the two whole steps are going to get compressed. So instead of 204, they're going to get pushed. The, those springs are going to get compressed. And then the major third, which uh, is going to get expanded slightly. So let's take a look at that here. I'm going to go to my spring tuning basics here. And I'm going to play that same thing. C, D, we got 204. And actually, if I play D, E, it's going to also be pretty close to 204. If I play all three, So by default, this is what happens. Now, we're going to start looking at some of the other features of Big Clavier that give us different ways of addressing that. So the only way to really address, uh, well, there may be other ways, but the way that we're doing it in Big Clavier uh, to try to address these non-unique intervals is to uh, be able to think about fundamentals in the same way. So in this case, if we want the C to D and the D to E to be different, it would be useful to know that, hey, well, if the C is the fundamental of our scale right now, then we can treat C to D as a different interval than D to E. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to set the fundamental for this interval scale to be C instead of none. So now, check this out. C to D is different than D to E. So we get, in fact, even when I play D to E alone, I get a different type of whole step than I get for C to D. Okay, because now the springs are like, oh, I'm not just looking at any old major second. I'm going to look at the D to E major second because we are considering our springs in the context of a C just tuning. Okay, so that's kind of cool, um, and that lets lets us do a bunch of different things. In fact, let's see. I'm going to change the fundamental to something else. I'm going to change it to F sharp, and now we get actually two different totally different sorts of whole steps. Um, so you get a different flavor of that interval, different flavors of these, of these, uh, uh, of, of this particular scenario. Okay, so this leads to some questions um, about how should we think about these fundamentals? Uh, sort of one of the points of spring tuning was to make it so that you didn't really have to think about that. You could just play flexibly and have, have everything adjust on the fly. Um, well, it's going to depend. There might be some situations where actually I'm going to be playing mostly in the key of, you know, E major. So you're going to set the fundamental to E. And maybe that will work 
for the, the music you're working on. Um, there are some neat little tricks here. There might be, for instance, actually I want the lowest note to always set the fundamental. So here I'm going to do this. And you can see here the current fundamental is being indicated. So if I play, each new low note changes the fundamental and the tuning will change accordingly as the fundamental changes. So this is interesting because now an ascending dominant seventh chord is going to behave differently than a, a descending one. It'll sound the same in the end, but not while it's happening. Okay, so, uh, you know, could do something similar like highest. In this case, now that dominant seventh chord sounds quite different because the fundamental is B flat instead of C. We might also say, well, instead of the highest or the lowest, we'll choose the last note played. So B flat. So that dominant seventh chord sounds different because the last note was C. And this one, the last note is B flat. So we can get some different sorts of behaviors. And some of that's pretty fun. It does beg the question, though, couldn't spring tuning automatically figure out a fundamental for us. Wouldn't that be great if spring tuning could just on the fly figure out a fundamental for us? And uh, the rationale for how that works or the, the algorithm for how that works is in this paper that I've um, uh, referenced before. And this figure 17 is actually the one that's of use here. And the idea is what we do is um, Bitclavier looks at the notes that you're playing and tries to figure out what overtone series they might fit into and then deduces a fundamental based on that. So if I'm playing a C and an E, it says, oh yeah, those are part of the C overtone series. If I'm playing an E and a G, those are also part of the C overtone series. So you could be playing notes. You could, you, you could end up with a fundamental and you're not even playing that fundamental because um, the deduced overtone series um, is different than the notes are being played. This is actually inspired by uh, this psychoacoustic phenomenon known as the missing or phantom fundamental, where our brain actually does the same thing. It constructs a fundamental, a note that's not there in the air based on what we're hearing. Uh, using a similar, well, I don't know what the me mechanism is, but it, you end up in the same sort of place um, by using the algorithm we, we use here in Bitclavier. So if I set the um, fundamental to automatic now, you'll notice down here that the current fundamental is going to change all the time based on the playing. Yeah, so... play. Um, so let's uh, take a look now at um, some of the things that occur when you play with this. So for instance, I want to go back to this example here. And you'll note that it sets the fundamental to C because it's like, well, C and E, um, C and E seem like they uh, are, are part of a C fundamental. So, uh, if I had the D, well, that might just be the Um, but you'll still see that the C isn't actually at zero offset. And maybe you're like, hey, you know, when I have a fundamental, I actually want that to be really anchored tightly. So what I want to do is make the weight of the fundamental C um, be one and the weight of the others to be uh, zero. So now we get a beautifully tuned chord, actually. Um, it is still anchored. It's not going to fly away. Okay, now I'm going to play a D, F sharp. Oh, now we've got a D, D, F, D, E, F sharp. So we've got a D fundamental, but we've got the same problem because, oh, I set the D. Uh, now I've got to sort of by hand do that. Now 
Now I go back to C, D, E. Oh, now this is messed up again. So uh, it gets pretty tedious and actually not even practical because some of these, these aren't even visible when those notes aren't present. So that gets to the last point about um, the last spring uh, tuning feature here, and that's the sets weight option. And this here says that, okay, that means that the fundamental is going to set the all of the weights. And in fact, that option goes away. If I set this to none, this option goes away. If I set it to C, that's fine. I can also have the, 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 the weights uh, set accordingly. I'm going to set it back to automatic. And I'm going to set this to set weights. And what this does is it says the uh, fundamental, uh, so whatever determines the fundamental is going to have a, a weight of 0.5. I can make it stronger or weaker. And then all the others are going to have a much weaker uh, um, anchor spring. So I'm going to play C, D, E again. And you'll see that uh, the C is almost equal to temperament. If I pull these down and pull this up, it's going to get there. Okay, so now if I play that other example, D, E, F sharp, the D is going to be fine. I'm going to play... going to get there so that the fundamental F is going to be zero offsets. So um, that is a really handy way of trying to ground your system so that you know where particular notes are going to be. Um, so this um, is very close now to that auto spring tuning setting. Let's go take a look at that. I'm going to set this to auto spring tuning here. And you see that I've got set weights and automatic. I've got these set here. And then you have a pretty high drag. Um, and then you know, 0.5 for most things. So one last little bit of information. You might have noticed there's these little buttons here. And one of them is different than the others. And uh, the idea here is that well, maybe we want to mix and match whether some of these spring lengths are set via the fundamental, or F, or whether they're set locally. Sort of like the original basic way of spring tuning where it doesn't really care about a fundamental. And I've got the perfect fifth set to be local here to try to avoid the so-called like wolf fifth that we sometimes hear in different sorts of uh, temperaments where we might, some of the, like in Pythagorean tuning, uh, one of the fifths is, is really um, incredibly out of tune. Um, and if you don't do this, if you make it an F, so fundamental, then sometimes your fifths are going to be tuned really out of tune. If you set it uh, to local, it's always going to try to make that perfect fifth. Uh, a three over two ratio or 702 cents. So it's a way of trying to ensure that the quality of particular intervals um, uh, is what you want it to be, if you want it to be that. So it's again, it's a way of sort of creating hybrids uh, where instead of having uh, non-unique, very like a sort of a garden of different sorts of perfect fifths, you're like, no, nah, I don't like any of those other perfect fifths. I just want this one. You can do that here and you could do that with any of the intervals. Uh, I think that is really all of the features in uh, spring tuning and uh, I hope that was useful and that between these videos and the tutorial uh, you're able to get spring tuning to oscillate the way you'd like.